Hey everyone, my name is Greg and I'm making this video because I wanted to show the importance of having a ground probe installed on our aquariums. Um, I, I think most of us know that uh, you should definitely have the power going into your aquarium GFCI protected, whether it's with a, um, an outlet, um, a pigtail coming off an outlet, or uh, the best way to do it is to have your whole circuit protected by a GFI breaker that protects it all the way back to the panel. Uh, but uh, there are some instances where a GFI is not enough um, and you can have some pretty uh, dangerous things going on in your aquarium that you would not want to have going on that your GFI is not going to protect you from unless you have a ground probe installed. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some examples of that uh, and just show exactly what can happen if you do not have a ground probe installed, even if you do have a GFI, uh, GFI protection. So I'm going to take a walk into my bathroom right here. And what I got in here is I got a five gallon bucket filled with water. And inside the water, I have a defective Aquion heater. Um, and we're going to use that as our example today. Uh, I also have inside the water uh, a ground probe. Uh, they're made with titanium. You can use them in salt water. It costs about ten dollars on Amazon, so uh, it's not gonna not gonna kill you to get one. Um, and I also have a multimeter here turned on to volts AC that we're gonna be using in a minute as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to plug our ground probe in. That's gonna give a path to ground inside the water with our ground probe. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the plug for our heater here and we're going to plug that in and look what happens. It trips right away. Okay? So let's uh, unplug. Reset our GFI, get it back on. So what, what happened here? Uh, like I said, we got a defective heater, uh, so presumably we had current bleeding out into the water. And since I had my ground probe installed, that voltage and current had a path to ground, and it told my GFI it needed to trip. So let's take a look at what happens here if I remove the ground probe and we plug in our heater. Okay, looks like we're running, nothing's tripping, everything's okay, right? I'll take the red lead on my multimeter here, I'm going to drop that in the water, and then I'm going to grab my black lead, let's take a look at, oh look at it, see we're already up to 5 volts, and I don't even have, I don't even have uh, the ground connected, so I'm going to take my black lead, I'm going to connect that to ground, and look at that. We got 120 volts in the water. We got the heater connected to a GFI outlet, and we got voltage in the water. Still, no trip. Let me unplug the heater here. So. Some people are going to say that, well, okay, that's all well and good. You had 120 volts in the water, but as soon as you touch that water, the GFI is going to trip. You're going to be fine. And that's true in some aspects, um, but that's also not true in other aspects. And the reason why that's not true is because GFIs only activate until a certain amount of current is reached, uh, which means that you could put your finger in that water and if not enough current isn't generated to trip that GFI, you'll still, you'll, you will still get shocked. Now look, that's not going to kill you, it's not going to injure you, but it's, trust me, it's enough of a jolt that you're not going to want to stick your hand back in that tank. It, it's, it's not going to be like a little tingle or like a little static shot or, or whatever. It's going to make you jump back a little bit and it's not going to be fun. And all that aside, who wants 120 volts just floating around in their water? I know I don't. Um, you know, the fish probably won't really care. I mean, they're not grounded. Um, 
you know, people have voltage bleeding into their aquariums all the time. They don't even realize it. Uh, but this just shows you uh, what can be going on in your aquarium. You don't even know it before you stick your fingers in there. Um, so, you know, that's that's just what I wanted to show everybody, uh, especially with heaters. Heaters are notorious for causing problems like this. Um, so if you have that ground probe installed, you don't have to worry about the voltage um, bleeding off into your tank. And I wanted to say this is different than inductance caused by your pumps running. A lot of the times people will do the little multimeter test that I, that I just did inside their tank and they'll see, you know, maybe 20 volts or something on there. But you'll stick your hand in your water, in the water, and you don't feel anything. And the GFI doesn't trip, even when you have a ground probe installed. Well, I know you don't have a ground probe installed, because if you had a ground probe installed, you wouldn't have 20 volts on there. But um, that's just inductance um, being generated in the water from your, your pump motors in the water running. That's, that's not really dangerous. That's not going to hurt you. 120 volts from a defective heater getting into your water, that's a whole different story. And you don't want that floating around in your water um, just waiting for somebody to put their hands in. Um, so that's my experiment. Um, and that's it. I just wanted to let everybody know, show everybody the importance of having a ground probe. And it costs $10. Uh, definitely worth the money just for that extra added bit of safety in your aquarium. I mean, if you don't care about getting, getting shocked a little bit, um, I know your kids might if you have them. Or I know you definitely don't want your kids to stick their fingers in the aquarium and get a huge jolt. Um, so just keep that in mind. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.